Welcome to Story Lab. This week, we're talking about faith, while we take a look at the story of two men who found a very peculiar place to have a sing-along on their travels. I think I need to get my passport renewed. Hey, I'm Skylar. And I'm Sebastian. We're talking about faith, which is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. What's happening? Wait for it. <sighs> Grab your hula hoop. Okay. Ready, set, move. Come on, hula hoop challenge. Oh, you're on. Oh, okay, so I got. I just got an unlucky start. Three sixty. Three sixty. Okay, I see what you did there. <laughs> I haven't done that in like. Three years. <laughs> but you're smiling. Because I feel totally ridiculous. Well, I've been researching things that make people happy. And you want to know what's on the top of the list? Hula hoops. Exercise. OK, I believe it. I always feel better after a morning run. Or a morning hula. Exercise helps the body produce hormones like dopamine, serotonin, and endorphins that make us feel good and reduce depression and pain. Even just exercising your smile can make you feel better. Smiling can trick your brain by elevating your mood, lowering your heart rate, and reducing your stress. I feel great, but now my face hurts. I feel like the Cheshire Cat. What else helps us feel happy? Sunlight. One more reason to hit the beach. Facts. Number three, chocolate. Dark chocolate can improve blood flow to the brain and boost the production of endorphins. Mm. Mm. Chocolate is basically a health food. In moderation. So don't replace your carrot sticks with chocolate chips. Mm -hmm. OK, exercise, sunlight, chocolate. What else makes us happy? Well, number four, playing with pets. I'm taking you home as my own personal therapy pet. 
I'm so relaxed. Can we just play this day on repeat? We're not even done with number five. Hugs. Aww. There you have it. Five scientifically proven ways to be happy. Except we can't be happy all the time. Sometimes life gets really hard and joy seems far away. Sometimes you need more than chocolate and hugs. Exactly. It's time for... The story before the story. Today, we're in the book of Acts, which tells the story of the early church. But before Acts, way back in the very beginning, out of a deep, deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to draw people back into relationship. So, at the right time, God sent Jesus, God's very own son, to live among us. Jesus gave up his life and was killed. But on the third day, he rose to life. After Jesus returned to heaven, the early church grew quickly. The Apostle Paul traveled thousands of miles to tell about Jesus and started many new churches, including one in the city of Philippi. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Erica. Hey, hey Erica. Paul had begun a second long journey to share the good news about Jesus. While he was on the town of Troas, God gave him a vision. In the vision, Paul saw a man pleading with him. Come over to Macedonia and help us. Paul and his friends, Silas and Luke, immediately set sail and within a few days reached Philippi, which was a Roman colony. Now, there was no official meeting place in Philippi, but on the Sabbath day, Paul and his friends found a woman named Lydia and several others praying by the river. They became believers in Jesus, and Lydia, a successful businesswoman, opened her home to Paul and the brand new church. Pretty soon, the new church was flourishing. God had called Paul to come to Philippi, and it seemed everything was going perfectly. But as Paul and his friends walked to the place where they prayed each day, a girl began to follow them, shouting loudly, these men are servants of the Most High God who are telling you the way to be saved. These men are servants of the Most High God. These men... Sounds great, right? I mean, she was telling the truth. But sadly, the girl was controlled by a spirit who was not from God, and several men were using her to make money for them. For days, the girl followed them, shouting, Paul got so annoyed that he turned around and commanded, In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. And you know what? The spirit left her right away. But instead of celebrating that this girl had been healed, the men who had been using her were furious. She could no longer earn money for them. The men were so filled with rage that they grabbed Paul and Silas and dragged them to the marketplace to stand before authorities. These men are Jews and they're throwing our city into an uproar. They're trying to push customs that aren't lawful for us Romans. It was all lies, but the officials didn't care. They ordered that Paul and Silas should be beaten and thrown in jail. It was a harsh punishment and Paul and Silas must have felt pretty terrible by the time they arrived at that prison. The jailer was given orders to guard them carefully, so he put them in a secure inner cell and fastened chains on their feet. We can only imagine what Paul and Silas were thinking. It seemed so clear that God had called them to Philippi, yet here they were, lied about, beaten, and locked up. It would have been easy to start grumbling or doubt that God even cared. But Paul had seen God at work in hard times before. He trusted that God was with them. So right there in that cramped, dark jail cell, Paul and Silas began to pray and sing. My soul finds rest in God alone, my rock and my salvation, a fortress strong against my foes, and I will not be shaken. Suddenly, around midnight, the earth began to tremble. A violent earthquake shook the whole prison. Doors flew open, chains broke off. The jailer awoke and ran to check the damage. When he saw the door swinging wide open, he was terrified. 
The prisoners were his responsibility, and if they escaped, he would be killed. In fact, he drew his sword to take his own life. But Paul shouted out, Don't harm yourself. We are all here. Weak with relief, the jailer fell down before them. He brought them out of the jail and asked, What must I do to be saved? Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. Paul and Silas were able to share the good news about Jesus with the jailer and his entire household. The jailer cared for their wounds, and then he and everyone who lived with him were baptized. Filled with joy, the jailer brought Paul and Silas into his home and gave them a good meal. In the morning, the authorities sent word to release Paul and Silas, but Paul wasn't about to let them gloss this over. The authorities panicked when they realized they had unfairly hurt and imprisoned Roman citizens, so they publicly released Paul and Silas and asked them to leave the city. Paul and Silas took their time, first visiting the other believers at Lydia's house to encourage them. Then they left. The end. Gotta be honest, I would have thrown a pity party instead of singing. Yeah, Paul and Silas were in a really dark place. I mean, for sure, but instead of focusing on everything that was wrong, they kept their eyes fixed on God. Even in a dark, damp prison cell. <laughs> and they still found joy. So what's our part in the story? Great question. There are going to be times in your life when things seem dark. In fact, Jesus told his friends, in this world, you will have trouble, but be encouraged. I have won the battle over the world. So if money is tight and your family can't take any trips, God can give you joy. Or if you practice really hard and still don't make the soccer team, God can still give you joy. Exactly. We're in the middle of a struggle, but the ending has already been decided. God will make everything right. When we remember that and keep our focus on Jesus, then God can give us joy no matter what we're going through. When you pray for help, God won't always make your difficult circumstances go away. But God can always give you joy. I think you've got it. See you next time. Bye, Bye Erica. Erica. So here's the thing, God can help you find joy. Even when life feels really hard, you can always ask God for joy. While you're on a walk, in the sunlight, eating chocolate. Oh. Mm. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you next, next time. time. Oh, look. Oh, wait, let me try two. <gasps> then we can add three. Three, okay. three. Okay. You got it. Yes, yes. I beat my record. <laughs>